Hello, middle school math teachers. In this video, we're going to be exploring some effective strategies for teaching problem solving to your middle school math students. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership, your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach middle school math. So problem solving is a vital skill that we have in our math classes. And by incorporating these strategies that I'm about to teach you, you can help your students be more confident and successful in their problem solving skills. So let's dive in. Okay, so step number one, we're gonna wanna introduce the importance of problem solving. Students have to buy in, they have to see the importance of it or else they're just not gonna care, right? Like how often do we want to do things that we just simply don't care about? Not very often. So we have to show our students the importance of this because in reality is, the reality is we are problem solving all the time, no matter how, what, like how old we are, right? In all areas of our life, whether we are three years old to 93 years old, we are constantly problem solving. And to show our students how we're problem solving in our real life, you know, talk about like real examples of problem solving. This can be everything from, hmm, what um, what outfit am I gonna wear to school tomorrow, right? They can understand that. Like, is this like gonna be the right thing to post on whatever social media that our kids are are on these days? Like, uh, like how is this gonna affect my social life if I post this or if I don't post this? Or those are the type of problem solving that they can, I think at least, cause they're kids, that they can really resonate with, right? Or things like, hmm, what time do I have to leave school if I have to be at practice at you know, 4 p.m. Do I have time to eat something? Do I have time to start my homework? Do I have time to chat with this friend? These are all examples of how they problem solve. And it's important for them to know that these, while we are problem solving in math, it translates into problem solving in their real life. Okay. So off my soapbox now. Okay. Step number two, we have to break down the problem solving process in order for them to be able to do this themselves into, you know, we have to break this down into manageable steps. So the four steps, here are four steps. It's not the four steps, but here are four steps that you can use to help your students um, on their problem solving journey. So step one, they have to understand the problem, right? Read the problem carefully. We wanna encourage our students to read it out loud, read it multiple times. What is the vital information that they need to know? And what is the problem asking of them to do? This helps them get a better understanding of the problem itself. All right, step number two, what is the plan? So we have to devise a plan. So are we going to use a visual representation? Are we going to use some type of you know, tape diagram? Are we gonna be using some type of manipulative? This step helps our students gain some understanding for the problem itself before, like it gives them an opportunity to have trial and error, like work backwards, like what are some things that they can do to plan out how they're gonna solve it, okay? And we wanna provide them with different opportunities. We're not solving it for them. We're not telling them how to solve it. We're just giving them the options of here are all the ways that we've talked about or things to consider that might help you solve this problem, okay? Then once they've kind of devised a plan, they have to implement the plan. They can figure out you know, now mathematically how to solve the problem. Remember, we wanna always be encouraging them to show their work, explain their reasoning, like all the things that we already know, right? And then once we have found the solution, we wanna think about, evaluate, reflect, like does this make sense, right? Check for check for like the make sense-ness of it all. I know that's not, that's not grammatically correct. Check for the reasonableness, right, of it all. And make sure that like the answer matches the problem, okay? And if like, in okay, so first, so that's the four steps. We want to understand the problem, devise a plan, implement the plan, and then reflect. Now, step really step three of it all, because we've talked about kind of three step, two steps so far, which is introducing the importance of problem solving, breaking down the problem, and then the four step process was 
in that breakdown of the problem. Now we want to use real world context. So how can we incorporate actual real world things in their life so that it again helps them give the purpose like budgeting you know measurement data analysis things like that it doesn't always work but we want to always provide as much real world context as possible next if they are not being able if they're really not figuring this out if they're really struggling let's provide some scaffolding support so can you use graphic organizer are there manipulatives are there you know is there a step by step or is this something that they need to talk out loud with collaborate which leads me into the next um, tip is collaboration and discussion group work doesn't always um, resonate with everybody I know for me personally I was never a group work person but we want to be able to lean on our fellow mathematicians our fellow peers in the classroom to talk about how we're going about to solve this problem, right? We want to learn from each other, develop communication skills. It's all very important. And then finally, how are you as a teacher going to provide feedback, assessment? Um, you know, we want to provide feedback and assessment in real time, but also we want to be able to give them space to be able to, you want to be able to provide them space to us. You want to provide space so that you can assess later, but also in real time. So that could look like observations, student self, self assessments to rubrics to tests, really any method that you feel is the right fit in that moment. And there you have it. Those are my strategies on how to help your students be better problem solvers in the math classroom. I'd love to know which one you maybe aren't necessarily implementing right now, but could do a better job at because we are all on this journey together. I can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Until next time, bye for now.